Welcome back. So if you don't recognize me, it's still me, not the year Natasha. I just have new glasses. Yes, these are my Versace glasses, also known as my Queen of Zamunda glasses. It's a new year. I am here and I'm also celebrating one year of YouTube. This is my one year YouTube anniversary and I've made some goals because in this one year I met my thousand subscribers. I actually should have almost 1300 now. Ooh. And I also made the 4,000 watch hours what's required to get monetized, so I'm officially monetized. So if you see ads in my videos, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to make some money somehow. So here we are. In celebration of one year on YouTube, first and foremost, I wanted to stress that I would have never gotten here without my amazing subscribers and viewers and just this community, this embroidery community and how we say CC Squad, community over competition. I wouldn't be here right now without you guys. I love you guys and thank you so much. So, in order to celebrate my one year on YouTube, what I wanted to do was just kind of put some information out there because I know that there are a lot of people sitting there right now. You could be watching this or maybe you're not even watching this, but there's so many people sitting out there right now who are like, I want to start a YouTube channel eventually. I want to start my Etsy business eventually. I'm going to do it. And it might be years you've been saying this. And I know this because that was me. I was saying this for years. I started doing little things here and there, but I never like fully went through with it for years until literally January last year when I finally sat down. I was just like, okay, I'm just going to start. And however it works out, it works out. And here I am a year later. And let me tell you, that first video was trash. I was trying to do an unboxing video for my um, my embroidery machine, my brother PE800. And as I'm filming it, com camera completely cut out and I didn't even know. So I didn't even film it, basically. I filmed like the beginning and the end and I cried. And I'm like, see, this is why I can't be on YouTube. Nothing ever works for me, blah, blah, blah. But eventually, like the next day I came back and I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna post it anyways and whatever happens, happens. And here I am. So that's what you have to do. So because of lessons like that that I've learned, what I want to do is share it with you guys. So that maybe it'll help you, maybe it'll give you the kick in the pants that you need to start your channel or start your business or start whatever it is in life that you wanna start, that you keep saying you're gonna start and you haven't. Um, I must also say that this is my one year anniversary on YouTube, but technically, I started a YouTube channel in 2008. So we're talking like 13 years ago now, just about. Um, this was like in the beginning of YouTube and I swore like I was gonna make like the first like free travel show on YouTube. So basically like in my head, I invented travel vlogging before it was a thing, in my head, anyway. So I had all these plans, I filmed a trailer video and then I even filmed an intro video, but that one was horrible. It was in my mom's basement. It was horrible, so I deleted that. But I left the intro video on there. It was basically like a trailer, like a commercial for what the channel was supposed to be, but it never became. So, and it's actually still floating out there from 2008, um, my Globe Rider channel. So yeah, I had a little introduction years ago, but this has been my baby. This has been my real channel, DIY Diaz, um, where I'm focusing on DIY craft projects, Etsy business, YouTube, and family life. And eventually, I will get to throw in travel in here too, once quarantine and pandemics and all that are done. But I definitely can't wait to get back to traveling because that's pretty much my first love. And that will be on our channel too. So anyways, I wanted to go ahead and give 11 tips for those of you who want to start your YouTube channel or maybe you have already started and you're trying to see how to make it a little bit better. Again, I've only been here a year. I only have about 1300 subscribers. Subscribers. I am not in any kind of way an expert. I'm just sharing the little bit of knowledge, a little information that I got with you guys. Here goes nothing. Tip number one, use what you got. And I'm pretty sure you've watched other videos and this is one of the same things that they've said. They've said in some other way because it's that important. Don't be such a procrastinator. And this is me. Trust me, I know. Don't be such a procrastinator that you're like, well, until things are perfect, I can't get started. So until I have the perfect camera and the perfect setup and the perfect room and lighting, I can't get set. Like I, I'm going to have to wait until I can afford all of that. Don't do it. Just use what you got right now. Trust me. You have yourself, and most likely you have a cell phone with a camera. It doesn't even matter if it's an old cell phone. If it has a camera, use it. You got something, 
you can make it work. You can even edit your videos on your phone. It's perfectly fine. The only thing that I would suggest is that when you're using your phone to record, don't record like this. Record like this. So that you have like a full frame video and it helps when other people like myself are watching YouTube from TVs or computer screens. Not everybody watches on a cell phone, so it's better if you put it this way. So yeah, when I, I've, I've filmed like that with my phone and you can't even tell the difference between my phone and my camera or my GoPro or whatever. So yes, you can use what you got. You can do editing on there. You can even do like color grading and all kind of stuff. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there to show you how to do that. So trust me, use what you got. You expand as you go. I just got this camera. I started off with the GoPro and with uh, my phone. But you know, as I keep going, look, I got lights now. I'm a little fancy. Not really, but I'm just making steps as I go. And eventually I'll keep expanding. And I know that. And I have faith in that now because I've seen it and I'm a testament to it. So whatever you got right now, you just use and you get started. Don't procrastinate anymore. Tip number two, and this is so important, don't compare yourself to others, okay? You have no idea what they've gone through. You don't know what their journey is. You don't know what they had to go through to get to where they are today. So don't use their current highlight reel and compare it to your current life right now that might not be your best reel. It might be your sad reel. So don't, and do this with social media too. Don't do this with social media. Don't compare your life to others because you have no idea. For example, I've gone through a lot recently, a lot. I don't put it on YouTube. I don't put it on Facebook. Maybe here and there, I might drop a little nugget, but I don't put any of that stuff on social media. But what do I do keep posting because I'm having a rough day and it makes me happy? Posting pictures of my baby. Posting videos of you know what she does that makes me happy. So somebody can be sitting out there and watching that and thinking, wow, she has the perfect life. You know, she's got the baby, she's got the house, this is and that. And I, but I don't have the house. I'm renting this house. You know what I mean? You just never know what's going on in the background. You never know. So don't think that when you're watching a YouTube video and you see somebody with a really fancy machine, you, they might have a, a multi-needle embroidery machine. They might have a fancy heat press. They might have a MacBook Pro. And you're like, I wish I could have all that. I wish I could have all that. It's nice that they have that. Wow. You know. That'll never get you anywhere. One, because it's negativity. Two, because that's basically like coveting what other people have. Be happy for them and just think one day I'm gonna have that too and I can't wait. I'm gonna keep on my grind and one day I'm gonna have that too. So just please don't ever compare yourself to somebody else because you don't know, you know, maybe they have that fancy machine but because they've been working at it for five years and maybe you've been at it for five months, you know? So you never know. So just don't do it. Don't compare yourself to others um, and you'll get there. Number three, be you. Don't try and be anybody else. Don't try to be every other channel out there. You might think, well, you know, I'm a little bit off, I'm a little bit different, so people aren't gonna watch me. No, no matter what it is that you are doing in your video, no matter is who, no matter what it is, who it is that you are, geez, no matter if you have a speech impediment, no matter if you feel unattractive, if you feel like, you know, maybe if I got rid of my acne, I can go on YouTube. Don't think anything like that. Just go, just be you. There, Look, I used to think before, I have, I've had acne since I was like 12, it doesn't go away. I'm, I'm 33, going on 34 next month. It doesn't go away. And I used to think that I could never be on YouTube without putting on all kind of makeup first. And originally, I think I did start trying to put makeup first and you know, my eyebrows are thin. I'm like, my, you know, I have like invisible eyebrows. I gotta make sure that they're, that they're done before I get on camera. And then like quarantine hit, like right after I started my YouTube channel and I'm like, I'm not putting on makeup. If I'm not putting on makeup to go to work, I'm not putting on makeup to do a video. Otherwise, I'll never do videos because I'll be like, oh, I have to do my makeup. So no, don't worry about any of that. Be you, whoever, if you have a gap, if you got a snaggle tooth, whatever you got, just do it. Just, just be on YouTube. There are plenty of people out there who do all of that. There's no such thing as one standard of beauty. We're all beautiful in our own ways. So just do it, just be you. Don't be like everybody else. Do whatever it is that you wanna do for your channel. For example, like I'm technically part of like the embroidery community, kind of, but at the same time I do kind of, I do all kind of other stuff. Like I do craft projects and lifestyle and stuff like that. You know, that doesn't mean that I'm not, that I don't do embroidery. I mean, I haven't done it in a while because of all my situations, but I do do embroidery. I do do Etsy, but I do my own beat. I do my own thing and that's fine. So you should too, do whatever it is that makes you happy. <clears throat> Number four, do as much as you can by yourself. 
meaning be self-reliant search YouTube if you don't know how to do something like for example if you don't know how to video edit search YouTube videos and they'll tell you how to how to use video editing software um, and why I say this is because if you wait to find somebody who can do it for you you're gonna have to pay them so it's gonna be more expensive most of the time or you're just gonna have to depend on them and especially if you're not paying on them it's gonna be hard to depend on them so it's easier if you can just learn the skills yourself and you know you're just expanding your skill base anyway and um, then you can just rely on yourself and not have to rely on other people now eventually I'm sure you know a lot of the big youtubers they don't do their own editing or music or stuff like that but they find other resources at that point but when you're just starting off just do what you can use YouTube and find out what you can find out number five find your motivation and stick to it don't get bogged down by haters by negativity because there's always gonna be people out there that will say oh you can't you can't do YouTube because of this or oh you don't got time for that well I used to hear that one a lot you ain't got time for that um, you know are you sure you have the personality to be on YouTube I know I don't but here I am and um, sometimes it could even be family I'm not saying it was my family I'm not saying that but I'm just saying in general for people it could be your family it could be your loved ones it could be the people that are supposed to hold you up the most and sometimes they don't always do that for you they they might not see what they're doing but at the end just don't let them get in your head if this is something you want to do just go out and do it don't don't procrastinate find your motivation maybe your motivation is your kids maybe your motivate your motivation is a different way of life having passive income so you don't have to worry so you know work on the grind so much for every dollar <clears throat> whatever your motivation is find it stick with it number six be consistent stick with it don't do what I did this is how I, this is why I know this don't go months without posting a YouTube video you lose your little bit of your fan base and it hurts your YouTube algorithm and you know I don't know everything about the YouTube algorithm but what I do know is it's like machine calculating the background like how popular your videos are and the more popular they get the more they put it out there for people to watch and then the more they put it out there for people to watch and the more people watch and the more subscribers you get the more views you get the more money you can make eventually so don't hurt the machine you have to be consistent so that's why on my vision board for 2021 it's I have to make sure that I post one video per week now I'm sure that's not always gonna happen you know I meant I'm gonna give birth pretty soon but in general that's my goal is to post one video per week because that the more actually if you post two to three times a week it'll really help your YouTube algorithm but don't do what I did and go months without posting and granted 2020 was a rough year so much happened so much happened and we all know that we all have our different stories for 2020 and I'm you know I'm no different so it was a rough year and there was plenty of times where I just I couldn't I couldn't post I couldn't edit videos and then I found actually I could have the whole time because I had like seven to eight videos filmed just not edited but what happened I procrastinated I procrastinated and I did not sit down and edit the videos and then one day all of a sudden actually I'm gonna talk about that story a little bit later I'm gonna come back to that one but just remember one day something happened to change my motivation tip number seven and people that know me are probably laughing right now that I'm even gonna say this but tip number seven is to be patient I am like the least patient person in the world I promise you I am the least I have so much problems with patience I know I do but when it comes to YouTube I'm telling you be patient you are not gonna go viral overnight most likely most likely you're not gonna go viral overnight I'm not saying it doesn't happen but the chances of it are like slim to none so you have to be patient you have to keep working you have to keep grinding you the, the YouTube algorithm will notice you eventually subscribers will come views will come monetization money will come but it's not gonna happen overnight and don't do this as a get as a get rich quick scheme this is not like some kind of pipe dream don't do this thinking that you know you're gonna be like Ryan's world or whatever and be like a millionaire at age eight or whatever age you are right now don't come into this thinking that that's what's gonna happen because that's like going on a basketball court in your home in your hometown on the playground right and thinking oh I'm gonna be the next Michael Jordan you might it's a possibility but how likely is that really it's more than likely that you'll just play a lot or maybe you won't who knows but my point is 
just be patient rome wasn't built in a day i know this my mother tells me this all the time because i'm so impatient i'm so impatient but when it comes to youtube patience patience is a virtue tip number eight and so i'm going to come back to that story i said like a couple tips ago that i was going to tell you i'm going to tell you now so tip number eight is to interact on youtube as your channel and what i mean by this is you know before i started a channel i had my own youtube account under my name which was just natasha diaz and i used to go you know when i would interact with other people in the community i would comment or i would go on their live streams and comment as natasha diaz all the way i, I was already on my youtube channel for like 10 months i want to say before just one day i said hmm maybe i should log into my channel account the diy diaz account and interact from there instead Something just hit me that day. I was actually going to do a live, not do a live, I was going to view um, a live from Adelaida, um, little Alessia Co. I was going to view her live and I clicked on it and then I was like, oh, that's what it was. I went to click like and we were trying to get more likes for her video and I was like, oh, let me jump on DIY Diaz and click, and click like from there. So I did and I was just like, why don't I interact from this page? Why do I only interact from my personal page? So something told me, yeah, I'll just stay here, whatever. And all of a sudden, somebody commented to me, which I didn't even know you could, like, I, nobody ever commented to me before. Um, but they did the, like, the little at, like a mention. And they said, oh my god, DIY Diaz, I watch your videos. And I was like, me? You watch my videos? Who watches my videos? People watch my videos? And then, like, two or three other people said the same thing. My mind was completely blown. I just... Like, who watches my videos? I didn't think anybody really watched my videos. I had been on YouTube for like 10 months. Maybe it was nine, who knows? But I'm like, I'm amazed, like really? So I sat and I talked to them and then that's how I kind of like really got into this, you know, CC squad and embroidery community and all of that. And I was just amazed. And so that was kind of like my motivation. Cause they're like, oh yeah, it's been so long. Cause it, at this point it had been probably months since I posted any videos. This is where I was talking about that I had like eight videos filmed and just not edited. And so that gave me motivation. At the time I had all this work to do and school, I was, you know, it was a different semester, right? Um, and I was in and out of the hospital and stuff like that. So it was bad timing, but that fire and that motivation was there. So actually I ended up in the hospital for like three days and as I'm sitting there, I'm like, I need to go home and edit a YouTube video. I need to, I need to get back on it. Like when you're just sitting there for hours by yourself and missing your daughter, that was rough, it was horrible. But when you're doing that, like you just find different motivations and you're just like, when I go home, I'm going to do this. When I go home, I'm going to do this. So I might not have done all the things that I thought I was going to do once I went home, but I did like maybe a week or two later sit down. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to edit this video. And I did. And I posted it. And then I had those people comment and like the video. And I was just like, wow, this is what it feels like to be a YouTuber. So then I did the next video and then I just started pumping them out. And there was times where I had a couple in one week or even a couple in one day. And since then, I don't think I've gone a week really. No, no, that's a lie. I'm not gonna lie. There's not been many weeks I've gone without posting a, a YouTube video since then. So I've been way more consistent and it's helped because that's how I got my 4,000 watch hours. That's how I got my 1,000 subscribers. But because before that day, like I said, I didn't think anybody watched my channel besides like, my sister and like my husband will scroll through it a little bit and click like for me. So yeah, interact on YouTube as your channel. This is what this all tip was all about. Interact on YouTube as your channel and not your from your personal account. It helps. Tip number nine is you have to make investments. And what I mean by that is you have to spend money to make money. Anybody in the business world knows this for the most part. You have to spend money to make money okay so obviously if you're not making money in the beginning you don't want to spend much money that's that's important okay that's very important don't overspend in the beginning when you're not getting any kind of return on your investment but you do have to make investments in the beginning to get to where you want to be and when it comes to YouTube what I'm saying is number one um, if you can now sometimes you can't but once you can once you're able to invest in video editing software it'll make your videos a lot better it'll make it easier for you instead of just always doing it on your phone if you don't have that you start on your phone do it you know still follow my other tip you know use what you got but once you're able to 
invest and keep growing go ahead and get you some video editing software you don't have to get the top of the line $500 one or $200 one um, I use Wondershare, Wondershare Filmora um, and I started off with level 9 and then they came out with level 10 and they gave you they gave you the upgrade for free I want to say like you can pay per month if you want or by year or you can just buy a lifetime subscription which is what I did and I think it was like $70 I don't know I actually I need to look into this more because um I signed up for something to be an affiliate for them so I need to do that I need to look into that how to get that going um, but yeah I really love their software and eventually once I figure out this affiliate affiliate thing I'll post some videos about how I edit my videos um, I just feel like it's really user-friendly like there's a lot of it has a lot of capabilities but at the same time it's really user-friendly because I tried doing Adobe Premiere Pro and it was just too much I'm good with computers but it just like like bogged me down like it, it's like there's too many options you know what I mean so yeah I feel like Wondershare Filmora is a lot easier to handle, especially if you're a newbie. Maybe eventually when I step my game up, I can go back to Adobe Premiere Pro, but right now I'm cool, chilling in my lane. But anyways, I still had to make that investment for Filmora. Um, another investment that I make is every month is with Canva, and that's how I make all my, all my thumbnails for my YouTube videos are made through Canva. Um, and so that's a website if you don't know about it. There's a free version and then there's the paid version. The free version, you can go on there and you can make all kind of like, it's like digital designs. So even though I have Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, I use Canva because it's so easy and there's so many options and I really love it. It's just like quick templates and then switch this out, switch that out, switch this color. It's awesome. Now when you get the paid version, it ends up being like $12.95 a month. But for me, it's worth it because it unlocks more fonts for you. It unlocks um, all kind of like clip art and stuff and it unlocks like brand control so I have all my colors and my fonts and everything for DIY Diaz loaded in there and my logo and so I can just quickly just click my brand colors I don't have to worry about typing in like the um, the RGB numbers or anything like that it's all saved in there because I do the pro account also with the pro account you can download a clear background PNG file so if you don't have the pro account and you want to download something and it has a background it's going to keep the background whereas without you can make you know transparent backgrounds for your images on, on Canva if you have the pro account another big place where I spend money where I make an investment when it comes to YouTube and this is I've done all these investments by the way before getting monetized actually even though technically I am monetized I have still to receive any money I don't I might get a couple pennies maybe in a month or so but um, just so you guys know just full transparency but the other place that I spend money is epidemic sound I'm gonna put the link down below epidemic sound is a website it's amazing and it's a huge huge music library so what you do is you pay for a subscription per month which is uh, fifteen dollars and you have unlimited use of their entire library it also has sound effects as well and they have all kinds of music um, so once you, you, you link it to your YouTube account and then you can just download any songs that you want. You could type in like, I don't know, whatever you want basically. You can type in, you can search by genre, you can search by, you know, keyword search, whatever. It also, even though you're within the genre, it tells you like the mood of the song, if it's fast, if it's slow, if it's a happy song, if it's this, um, within each genre, which is really nice and it helps you pick out songs faster. And then you can just download them and you and you're comp you can completely use them on YouTube at any point without having to say, oh, music provided by or, you know, here's the artist, da da da. And some of them, it's not just instrumentals. There are also vocal songs as well. It has a huge library. And what I find amazing is that I don't have the same taste of music as most people. Um, I'm not, I, don't, I have a different type of, I have a different taste in music right but when I made DIY ideas I wanted to stay true to myself and my main music that I listen to is Spanish music so I looked on there and I saw that they had a Spanish section I first went to like the salsa section it was horrible that I have to say it's very I don't know somebody made it on their keyboard type thing it's not like real instruments like real salsa like so I'm more of a salsa purist so I'm upset at their salsa section though there's like one or two songs that I've used 
but they had an urban Latin section, which is more like reggaeton style, which I really enjoy. And it was nice. It was, you know, you know, it's not Daddy Yankee or anything, you know, it's not Maluma. But it's nice. It's, and so I just started using those songs. And since in this last year that I've been using it, they've grown that section. So I've been able to add more songs. Because at first it was kind of like there was five songs that I used over and over. And now there's a lot more. I still use some of the same songs over and over because I like them. But I'm, I've been able to, you know, push in some other songs as well. And what's funny is one day when I was sitting down and <clears throat> downloading some new songs, my husband comes into the room and he's like, is that one of your videos? And I had never played the song before. He's like, is that your YouTube channel? I was like, no, I'm looking for new songs for my YouTube channel. He's like, yeah, that's your music. That's your sound. I'm like, exactly. I wanted to have my own sound. I wanted to like, like this is my YouTube sound. So if you ever wanted to look at what my YouTube sound is, where it comes from, it's Epidemic Sounds in the Urban Latin section. So yes, Epidemic Sound is another way that I make an investment. Um, Another way, I haven't used this yet, but I know a lot of people use this, and I plan to at some point. Um, but there's a website called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And basically what it is, it's a way to contract people to do things for you. So if you want to make a logo and you have zero skills when it comes to graphic design, you can go on Fiverr, Fiverr and hire somebody who will make the logo for you. And you just kind of like set up a deal. You tell them how you want it and they'll like give you some examples and they'll charge you a certain price and they'll let you know ahead of time. That's Fiverr. Um, if you want a YouTube intro, I actually, I'm working on a new in YouTube intro and it's been kind of holding me back a bit because I want to do it myself, but I know I can go on Fiverr and get somebody to do it for me, but I kind of don't want to, I want to do it myself. So this is where I kind of go back and forth quite a bit, um, but I know I have that option out there because at the end of the day, like I told you in one of the previous tips, like do as much as you can by yourself, but if you're stuck and you absolutely cannot do it, or you know, it's just gonna take too much of your time and effort and sanity, then go ahead, go on Fiverr, make that investment and get it done. Like there's no need to hold yourself back if you can pay somebody five or 10 bucks to get done what you wanna get done. I'm not saying it's all five or 10 bucks, but that's where the name Fiverr comes from because I guess originally a lot of things were five bucks, but it depends on what you want and how picky you wanna be, how much it's gonna cost. So at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, you know, do as much as you can yourself but don't get to the point where you're so bogged down that you can't get it done. You know, if you can hire somebody out to do it or if you can make an investment somewhere. Because example, my original YouTube channel I told you about from 2008, um, it's really horrible, but I made the music for it. There was no epidemic sound back then. So I, as far as I know, I made the music for it. So that trailer, even though it's like less than 30 seconds, I wanna say, it took forever because I didn't have real ed ed editing software and I had to make the music myself and everything like that. So, yeah. Sometimes you can do things yourself, sometimes you can't. But at the end of the day, if you need to make that investment, make that investment. Make your channel and make yourself stand out from the crowd in some way, and that'll help. So tip number 10 is gonna be a little preachy. It's a quote that I came up with years ago, and there's two parts to it. I use it on my students a lot, I'm sure they're tired of it, but today I'm gonna use it on you. And basically what it is, is yesterday's impossibility is today's reality. So think about that. What that means is, you know, for example, 90, what, a little over 100 years ago, it was thought impossible for a human being to fly. But the reality is today, other than the pandemic, you can hop on a plane and fly just about anywhere in the world. Just about anywhere in the world. So yesterday's impossibility is today's reality. We have a new reality, which means then that today's impossibility is tomorrow's reality. So that's the second part of the quote. So just remember that whether it is that you want to start a YouTube channel, that you want to start a business, that you want to buy a house, buy a car, whatever it is that you want in life, whatever seems impossible today is only temporary. As long as you put in the work, you work hard, you grind, you do what you got to do, you can make that a new reality tomorrow. This is just, again, a little preachy, but just one thing to mention as an example, you know, the way I grew up was completely different than obviously the way I live now. Um, and something I thought about the other day as it's, I'm sitting here in winter and I was looking out my, my, my window into my backyard and there were deer passing by. And I was like, wow, 
when I was little, I couldn't go into my backyard because there were just drug dealers and stuff like that. There was all kind of stuff going on. So I wasn't allowed in my own backyard. It wasn't a regular backyard. Like, we kind of, like, lived in the Ohio version of the projects. So there was, it's not like it was, like, there wasn't a fence or anything, but we just weren't allowed back there. So reality in your life changes depending on what you do, <clears throat> what you do. And I've worked hard. I've worked hard all of my life. Nothing's ever been handed to me, like ever. Um, anything that I have, I've worked my tail off for, and I continue to do so every day. So from drug dealers to deer, here we are. Today's reality is completely different from yesterday. <clears throat> so stop wasting time stop hesitating and just make it happen put in the work make it happen to have a new reality tomorrow tip number 11 I refer to as the bread aisle and I'm pretty sure you've heard of this before so this is my final tip you may have heard of this before if you haven't I'm glad you're hearing it now if you think you know I want to start a YouTube channel and do um, embroidery but there are so many embroidery YouTube authors already now I'll never make it why should I even do it or why should I start this Etsy shop doing embroidery when look at how many people are out there and they're so much better than me if that's the way that you're thinking at any point what you need to do is go to your grocery store I mean you can pretty much walk down any aisle but the example is always walk down the bread aisle you're gonna see Schwebels, you're gonna see Roman Meal, you're gonna see Wonder Bread, you're gonna see all these brands, you're gonna see, you know, the Walmart brand, all these brands, whatever you see. They're all making the same thing, which is bread. There's really not much of a difference. Maybe Schwebels I like because it's a little softer, but it's still just bread. There's usually just like white bread and wheat bread, and that's about it. And there's a whole aisle of just bread. The same thing. It's not like anybody says, oh, this is garlic. You know, that's, sep that's, that's a separate section. But just sliced bread, at least in America, at least in America, sliced bread, it's all the same thing. And one day, probably somebody named Schwebels, because how else would you come up with that name? Mr. Schwebel woke up, or Mrs., and said, I want to make sliced bread like everybody else. And they did. And they're still making money to this day. Or their family is. Or their company. Whatever. Whatever. The point is... Walk down that red aisle. There are so many different people doing the same exact thing and they're still successful. As long as you put in the work, you can still be successful. Don't worry about everybody else. Worry about your own lane. Make it worth your while, whatever it is that you're doing. You put your own spin on whatever it is that you're doing. And don't worry about what everybody else on the side of you is doing. Not to mention, just because they're on the side of you doesn't mean that they're competition. Community over competition. You can find a great community like the embroidery community and We'll support each other. We'll support you. And you support us. And this is what we do. And this is how we build together. It doesn't always have to be about competition. So if, this, if there's something that you want to do, if you want to make a Lego building YouTube channel, do it. Do it. There are plenty of people out there who want to watch it. You won't be in competition with other people. You're just building upon that community. Because there are plenty of people that do things a little bit different. So for example, I watch a lot of Disney YouTubers and just because they're all going to the parks showing what's going on during quarantine or showing what's the, you know, the news or the remodeling or, you know, new projects, new builds, everybody has a different take on it. They have their own personalities. So do you and still do it. Don't hesitate. Walk down that bread aisle. You have something different to offer. Here's another thing. Don't think, oh, somebody's better at me than embroidery or Lego building, so I'm not going to do it. There's plenty of people better at everything that I do. Everything. Actually, I'm not even nowhere in the top anything. I'm at the low, at the bottom, right? But maybe I have something different to offer. Maybe my personality vibes with different people. I don't know why it would, but maybe it does. Maybe I'm better at, at this, this is something I could say. Maybe I'm better at teaching because actually I work in education and I'm not exactly a teacher, but I am a teacher in a way. It's weird, but I have more of the patience for teaching somebody not for things other things but I have the, more of the patience to teach somebody and to go step by step so and that's just something like innate within me so maybe that helps me do better YouTube tutorial videos I don't know maybe it does maybe it doesn't you let me know but the point is you never know what something you have to bring to the table that's different so just do it just go for it stop hesitating 
So those are my 11 tips. I'm sorry that they were a bit preachy. I tend to do that. I get very passionate about certain subjects and that's one of them just kind of giving advice and life goals and things like that. So I get very passionate about that. So those were my 11 tips for starting a YouTube channel. But the last part of this video, what I really wanted to dedicate to, because this is my one year YouTube anniversary, I have my community over competition shirt on, and I wanted to make sure I shout out the YouTube community. Because there's so many great YouTubers out there, whether they have their 100,000 subscribers, or maybe they have 100 subscribers. That doesn't make them any less good. They're amazing, and there are some really amazing people out there. So I wanted to make sure I highlight them. Um, anybody that, I, that I'm about to say, I'm going to link their channel in this link in this description so please check them out please do um you never know you might find somebody you're like this is what i've been waiting for this is this is the type of thing i want to see and you never know because maybe they only have a hundred thousand a hundred subscribers and they haven't really activated the youtube algorithm too much yet so my way of just giving back to the community that gave so much to me is to shout out a bunch of youtubers so first of all i want to go over the embroidery ladies so first and foremost, you can't talk about any embroidery YouTube videos without talking about Angela because even though she didn't start it, she created this boom here and we all owe so much to her because she gave so much of her time and so much of her information and so much education out there for all of us. So I mean, you have to talk about Angela. Always, always, always. She's amazing. So her channel, if, if for some reason you haven't seen it yet, is Angela Jasmina. She just hit her 100,000 subscribers. I've been watching her for a while um, and just all the growth that she's made it's so amazing I'm just so ridiculously happy for her and her family I just love it so Angela and Angela started mostly from watching Pamela and her channel is Sterling's Sterling's style I have trouble with S's Sterling's style she's amazing she has so many videos because she does I think mostly like daily vlogging and she's been in this she's been in this game for a long time. She is she's the OG, I feel like. Pamela is the OG of the embroidery YouTube world. Um, so please check her out as well. Um, from there, I feel like there's a lot of like newer comers, new newcomers. Um, but some of them have really been taking flight lately. One of them is her name is Adelaida, and her channel is Little Alessia Co. She's amazing. Um, also, her mother has her channel too. Her mother's in a lot of her videos, but she has her own channel, and her channel's in Spanish. So I get asked all the time to do my videos in Spanish. And while technically I can, I was born and raised in the United States, so you know I speak Spanish. It's not perfect. I'm just throwing that out there. So I, I hmm. I would be very intimidated to make a whole video in Spanish. Very intimidated. So I refer to people to Adelaida's mom's channel. Her channel is called Siomara Cisneros because that's her name. I'll definitely type that underneath for anybody who needs that. But her channel is all in Spanish. So please check her out as well. Another big one who I've, been, I've become a big fan of lately is Cindy. And her channel is Cindy Moncada. Um, she's amazing uh, she's like really insp inspirational as well and her like even though she's been on youtube because I've, I've gone back and i've watched all her videos that's what i do when i find a good youtuber i go back to the beginning and i watch all their videos and so she's been on for years and but recently she changed it up and started doing more embroidery and all of a sudden her channel took off so i'm so happy for her she's amazing Nita Fajita is another one she does a lot of baby blankets and embroidery they're amazing um she's awesome as well her channel is really starting to come up so please check her out bingham bliss that's amber she uh she's like a professional like her workspace i think it's a garage i don't know but it looks like a factory but like a cute factory she has so many i mean and all her stuff is like so professional like i feel like i can never be on her level but um she's very new to youtube and she just like took off because she does really great videos like she kind of like I love how she does she puts a camera like up high and then she just goes from like one workstation to another like she's at her serger she's at her you know embroidery machine she's at her sewing machine it's just amazing so it's awesome to see her work oh and of course sweet thread gifts I think that was like the third YouTube channel I ever watched um and that is um Danny Danny is just so amazing she is like the sweetest person on earth. I've never met her. I've never really spoken to her, but I feel her warmth. She's just so amazing. She's so sweet. So please check out Danny. Sweet thread gifts. 
So those are all the embroidery channels that I watch that have good followings already. And I'm not saying that to like down anybody else. What I'm saying is the next channels that I'm going to say are all girls who are building. They're really trying to get there. They, they might not have their thousand subscribers yet. So please check them out. They're new or maybe they're not as new, but they're still building and they're really amazing. So some of those ladies are La Belle Petite, that Char. That's my girl. She's amazing. You're amazing, Chica. You know it. Um, I don't know everybody's first name. I'm going to tell you that. I don't know everybody's first name, but I watch your videos. Um, oh, this one I do know. Gabby, best of both worlds. 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 Best of both worlds co. That's Gabby. She's awesome as well. Damn it, apparel. Um, that's Chantel. She's from South Africa. She's awesome. Embroidery mom in Spain. I have no idea what her name is, but she's in Spain. And I love Spain because I studied abroad there. Pipsqueak Days, um, another one, Miba Designs, I'm reading, I'm sorry. Oh, Kachi's Customs, I haven't seen her post a video in a while, but she's really awesome. I think her name is Cassandra, um, but her channel is Kachi's Customs. Valley Girl for Life, Aqua Bloom Boutique, she's amazing as well. Magnolia's Design Shop, these are all really amazing ladies, um, and I know there's so many more out there. Um, I'm trying. I have so many videos in my watch list on YouTube and different channels to start watching and subscribe to and I haven't had the time to do all, to watch all of them yet. But these are just some that I've watched. They're amazing ladies. They're really on the come up. So please um, show them some love and some, and some support and check out their channels. So next, it wouldn't be me without mentioning Disney YouTubers because I think that's pretty much why I first came to YouTube on a regular because like my student, I, I work with high school students and middle school students, and they're always on YouTube, but I'm just like, okay, vloggers, whatever. But then I slowly but surely came to YouTube because I was watching Disney vloggers, and then I started having, I realized what subscribe was and all of that. And yeah, and now it's, I watch more YouTube than I watch TV, I want to say, which is a big deal because I love TV. So yeah, YouTube vloggers. Um, my favorite right now is Dev. His, name, his channel is PC Dev, which stands for PC or Prince Charming Dev. That used to be his name. He changed. He shortened it down to PC Dev. He's awesome. He just got engaged. He just hit his hundred thousand subscribers. Um, his fiance is amazing. I love her. She's in his videos as well. They're just such a cute couple, and they're awesome. Mickey Views. Um, this guy named Brayden. He's a young kid, but he's he's so cute. He just loves Disney so much, and he goes so in depth. He gets so excited about things. I, I love his enthusiasm and his passion. Um, and then another one is DSNY Newscast. He's from England. That's Jack. Jack's amazing as well. He's so in depth. He's so good with marketing. I believe he was a marketing a um, major in college because like his channel is like perfectly marketed. It's amazing. Um, then. Two other ones I watch that are kind of go over like Disney history in a bit is Midway to Main Street, so in depth. And um, oh no, Mid Midway to Main Street is the one that um, goes in depth some of the history pieces about Disney. I love stuff like that. And then Theme Park Stop, they cover a lot of both parks, but a lot more Universal. Um, so I like that, like Universal Studios, I should say. And then there's Magically Emily. And she does a lot of like Disney merch and Disney pins. She's a huge Disney pin collector. But what she also does is a lot of ear tutorials. So like the headband ears for Minnie Mouse and stuff. So, um, which I, I, that's something that I do as well. I think I've showed them in, in a video, but I've never made a video for it. So I plan on doing that soon. But magically, Emily, like she is literally the boss. Like she's the number one ear maker I've ever seen. Her stuff is like beyond like amazing grade. <clears throat> Next, I watch some travel vloggers. Probably the number one channel that I watch is Kara and Nate. They're amazing. They're a young couple. They've been flying over the world for a few years now. They made it to 100 countries. And what they were doing when they first started their channel, because I've gone back and I've been trying to watch all the videos. They have so many videos, like hundreds, maybe over a thousand videos already. But they um, basically gave up everything at home and just started traveling around the world from place to place and just coming home for like holidays and staying with family that was the case all the way up until quarantine and the pandemic last year so they were forced to come home but what they ended up doing which was so interesting is they bought a sprinter van and converted it into like a living space so they've just been traveling all around the united states driving and exploring our home country 
Um, so they're really amazing. They're a really cute couple. And they taught me something called travel hacking, which I plan to be doing soon. Um, and basically what that means is you're using like credit card points to earn free miles and free hotel stays and stuff like that. So they go over a lot of that in their videos. Um, <clears throat> this one's not so much travel, but life. And this one's called Life, life Where I'm From. Um, I think his name is Greg and he lives in Tokyo. He's from Canada, but he lives in Tokyo. His wife is Japanese, his kids are, you know, are half Japanese. And it's, um, he just goes really in depth showing what life is like in Japan. And I, I, I don't know, I just think it's really cool because I'm, I'm obsessed with things like that. I went to Japan once, it was only for 24 hours. It was a whirlwind trip, but it was amazing and I loved it. So um, I really like stuff like that. Another big one is Cup of TJ. She, um, she's really amazing. I actually took her YouTube course like two or three years ago. She's got a YouTube course to teach you like how to film some shots, you know, different tips and tricks. Um, it was really good. It was a really good course, by the way. I definitely highly recommend it. And, um, again, her channel is called Cup of TJ. And she also does that too, where she travels like all around the world. She focuses a lot at, on Asia. So, especially if you're like into like a lot of Asian countries and cuisine, she really focuses on food. She is a foodie, definitely. Um, definitely check her out. My last travel YouTubers is the Bucket List family. They are so cute. They're like what I aspire to be in life. Um, it's a young couple and they have three small kids. They are adorable. Oh my God, their kids are so adorable. Their little one, like, they literally just travel the world from place to place and their little one's in Pampers and like he was just born. So I think he's a little bit bigger now, but still, they're amazing. They're such a cute family and um, they go literally everywhere. They take their kids everywhere. There's no like not taking the kids. It's, it's them. They are the bucket list family. I think because of the pandemic, they kind of settled down somewhere a bit, but they're going to be back on the road soon, trust me. Now for cricket tutorials and ideas and stuff like that, I watch two channels. One is Mr. Crafty Pants. He's so awesome. He goes really in depth. If you need step-by-step -step instructions, especially how to use design space, he will go step-by-step -step for you. He is amazing. Mr. Crafty Pants. Definitely check him out. As well as Jennifer Maker. Um, she like she's really like hardcore she, with Cricut tutorials she has a beautiful setup in her office or her workspace studio that's a studio that's a whole studio but she's awesome my final section of youtubers that I want to share with you are for entrepreneurship or like for business goals one is sharp designs by Lakeisha I really like her channel because that's kind of like where I want my channel to be but hers is she focuses on balloons and party rentals and I want mine to focus on like Etsy and things like that. But then everything else that she shows like lifestyle, family life, travel, I want that to be my channel. So I want to be like Lakeisha when I grow up and have like a very like strong business and stuff like that. She's an awesome like businesswoman. So and she's very talented. So definitely check her out. Wholesale Ted. So this is something else I've been working on on the side. I'll share more information once I get there. But you know, I'm still, I'm hustling. I'm getting there. Um, this is dealing with drop shipping and print on demand, which I know, especially in this kind of community, print on demand is kind of like, no, no, you don't talk about that. But I'll talk about it once I'm ready to and I have things going and um, I'll explain why, put it that way. But if you want to get some of that information, definitely check out Wholesale Ted. Um, Ray is the entrepreneur. I love that guy. He's so funny but and he's real he keeps it real he keeps it real all the time and basically what he does he tries out different entrepreneurial schemes that people want to do not schemes but things that people want to do whether it's a t-shirt business or whether it's a vending machine business or truck driving whatever he talks to somebody who's doing it and he works with them um, to see how much money they can make in a week or in a month or stuff like that so you could see what it'd be like if you got into that business so his his channel is really cool Ray is the entrepreneur I really like him a lot um, and then the last one is Celia Gurkovich I believe that's how you say it she's Australian and she also does balloons so if you couldn't tell already I've been trying to break into the balloon business it's on my vision board um, so I've been watching a lot of more balloon videos and it's something with my my business that I have with my sister where we do our birthday signs and all of that so balloons is our next offering so that we can do party rentals year-round 
and not just in the summer and the spring in Ohio where it snows and you can't really do yard signs as easily. So anyways, I'm sorry. I know this video got very, very long um, and very preachy. But the point is I wanted to celebrate my one year anniversary with YouTube, with all of you, put some knowledge, put some information out there. If it helps one person, then I'm happy. If it just helps one person, I'm happy. So thank you for watching. If you're still watching this long video and still listening to me talk, I can't believe anybody would sit here and listen to me talk for this long. But if you did, thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking my videos and thank you for commenting. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And I'll see you next time.